community needs to wake up. We need to understand they have no liability. They have no ethical constraints. They will do whatever the uh, vaccine companies tell them to do. That's their marching orders, isn't it? It is. And we also have a federal bill that's been filed out of Florida. This mm -hmm. has never been a federal bill or a federal issue before. Technically, it's unconstitutional for this to be a federal issue, but I think we all know we have plenty of laws being um, passed on a federal level that are unconstitutional. So I just want all the parents to pay attention. I want all those parents that have sat in the NICU and been given coercive rhetoric about why they should vaccinate, which, by the way, was the only thing I was taught regarding vaccines in my graduate degree was co coercive rhetoric, not actually any other factual information. Um, but I want them to see the study and say, hey, that was me. And yep, my kid did that. Or if you're sitting in the NICU and your kid's ready for vaccination, that you have proof. They always want you to show the science. Well, they handed it to you. You better hand it right back to them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for pointing this out. And thank you for bringing this uh, the study to our attention. Thank you for having the integrity to stand up when these other people don't. It, it's very troubling, as you point out. Uh, there's no constitutional authority for the federal government to do this, but our constitutional and legal and political foundations are in ruins, and so are our medical ethics foundations. The idea of first do no harm, of informed consent, they have been trashed just like our Constitution. Thank you so much for joining us. Michelle Roden, uh, Nurses Against Mandatory Vaccines. Stay with us right after the break. Alex Jones has a special report. As I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, War is the ultimate bailout for the bankers. Alex Jones will break that down for us when we come back. Stay with us. And finally tonight, we're going to end this Monday edition of the Nightly News with a discussion of the impending threat of global nuclear war starting in Ukraine. I want to start off with a quote from Albert Einstein. I know not what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones, meaning the end of civilization as we know it. And that's if we're lucky and it's a limited nuclear war. The Atomic Energy Agency estimates that currently known stockpiles of nuclear weapons, if they were deployed, could destroy the planet, all life on the surface, bare minimum, more than 20 times. The numbers vary. But it is just mind-blowing to even imagine that our governments would be engaging in political and geopolitical activities that have taken us to a point that even most mainline analysts say is much more dangerous than the Cuban Missile Crisis in the early 1960s. The United States moved missiles into Turkey, so Russia moved missiles into Cuba. And clearly, if you go back to the early 1960s, the USSR was the villain compared to the United States and was being somewhat provocative, but so was the West. Now it's even more cut and dry that the West, via George Soros, who told Fareed Zarkaria on CNN a few months ago that he basically overthrew Ukraine and their elected government, he is now coming out and saying we're going to have World War III. And he came out again last week and said he's serious. He's really concerned about World War III when he, to a great extent, is behind it. So now we have a huge escalation. We've had U.S. troops there training Ukrainian forces for the last six months. We've had armor and other weapons being given to them by NATO. Uh, Lithuania and others are saying they're going to take weapons from NATO and send those into Ukraine. And what we have here is sectarian war, wherein the East, they're Russians, in the West, they're Ukrainians. Back in World War II, the country was split in two. One side was Nazi, one side was Russian. And so they're playing on those old divisions like North versus South. They're manipulating them. And this time, it's not the Russians with missiles in Cuba. It's the West with missiles 
and weapons right on their doorstep. And then I saw these headlines this morning. NATO will establish rapid reaction force to counter perceived threat of Russian aggression. And NATO is going into Ukraine, expanding the amount of advisors and training they're getting. Let's go over this. Secretary of Defense, AP, U.S. to provide weapons aircraft commandos for NATO, in part to counter Russia and to train Ukraine. Under the plan, the U.S. will contribute intelligence and surveillance capabilities, special operations forces, logistics, transport aircraft, and a range of weapons support that can include bombers, fighters, and ship-based missiles. It would not provide a large ground force. In Europe, U.S. forces are already there, but this is specific forces to counter Russia. Here's the Financial Times of London story from yesterday, dealing with the fact that Washington is now fearing that Greece is going to go with Russia because NATO, the EU, and the West have been sucking Greece dry. That's in the Financial Times of London. So Western tyranny has destroyed the West's soft power and is driving our traditional allies from Egypt to countries like Greece into the arms of the Russians. Not that the Russians are angels, but they're not the ones offensively doing this. Our government overthrew Egypt and put radicals in that blew up churches and crucified people. Now the military dictatorship has come back in. But what is our government thinking? What is it doing? It's destabilization. Earlier today, it was reported by USA Today that Lithuania to become the first country to arm Ukraine against Russia. Again, using NATO weapons, they're a NATO member, as if Russia won't know that's being directly pipelined to them. Well, another report now has them backing out of that with the Lithuanians saying that they are undecided. Their prime minister uh, says they're undecided at this point, obviously because of Russian threats. This is unprecedented. This was never done during the Cold War. It's extremely dangerous, and it fits into the world financial meltdown we see happening with the QE4 now getting lined up, with the saber rattling with China. The globalists need crisis to finally bring in their world government as the solution to not having nuclear war. But to cause a big enough crisis to sell the world on that, they need to push us to the brink of actually having that happen. This whole thing is a giant house of cards. That term gets used a lot, and it really is apropos today because our elites aren't smarter than other elites in history, and other political groups thought they could win major wars that they ended up losing. The difference is when they lost those wars, the planet wasn't dead. So we cannot afford this. Russia has said for any militarization of Ukraine, they're going to militarize. And so what we already have is a guerrilla proxy asymmetrical war between Western-backed NATO forces and Russian-backed Ukrainian forces in the east against each other. And we don't need this to expand. This is how World War I got going. And, and, and I'm not the only one saying that. Der Spiegel had historians laying it out. Parallels in 1914, what history teaches us about the Ukraine crisis. Uh, New Republic, what can 1914 tell us about 2014? That's from last year. Uh, we've got uh, a century later, after World War I, Europe sees modern parallels, New York Times. It isn't just Infowars.com or Alex Jones that's concerned about this. It's any historian, it's any military historian, it's anyone paying attention to what's happening. And our current crop of elites have shown themselves to be so aggressive that they're willing to fund al-Qaeda and other groups like ISIS to engage in huge war crimes to destabilize the Middle East, that they're willing to create trillions and trillions of derivatives destabilizing the whole economy so they can buy up the world through fraud. So we have to point out how much danger we're in to shake people out of their malaise, to shake the general public out of their trance, to realize we could have World War III if we're not conscious of it. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, people were concerned about this. We were able to de-escalate things through detente and not have nuclear war. Today, we're in more danger than ever, and the weapons are more powerful than ever because 
the irrational exuberance of the Wall Street crew who aren't free market has now infected the military. The military is now taking orders, not from statesmen, not from historians, not from other veterans like Eisenhower or Kennedy, but from disconnected megalomaniacs that run Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. It's got to stop. But history shows megalomania is a real disease, and elites always think they're invincible. A lot of elites, though, are very concerned moving into armored redoubts, uh, getting out of the stock market, you name it. We've never seen such a flurry of activity. Ron Paul thinks the big crash is coming very, very soon. I'm surprised the bubble's gone on this long. You've got the globalists trying to start race wars. There's so many things coming together right now. That's why we're ringing the alarm bells, so that hopefully we have enough of a mass awakening and enough of a mass discussion about this to move the debate back towards sanity. And, of course, most importantly, it's time to pray and to repent for all of our own decadences and corruption and to really think about what's most important in our lives. Is it entertainment and the latest celebrity sex change, uh, or is it trying to build a better world and a better civilization? Humanity is an amazing species. We can make it, but we've got to be conscious of this, and we've got to try to preserve things. All right, that's it for this edition. Great job to David Knight earlier. I wanted to come in and finish up the show just recapping uh, the excellent points he made. Please send this video and this warning to everybody you know because the world is accelerating towards expanded wars that could lead to World War III. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars Nightly News.